The economy, the markets, and everything interconnected and in between rely on one thing, and that is debt. The expansion of debt in every single possible way. The first thing I want to look at today is the Euro mess. Europe is in debt. It's saturated in debt. There's no doubt about it. And I'm going to bring you some new data you need to see, even if you're not in Europe. The second thing is going to talk about something you've heard many times before. Follow the money. Where's it going in? A, in where's it going out? we got to look at all of that. The third thing, cash is king. Is it really king? Well, what are the investors doing with their cash today? I've got all of that and more. Let's begin. So before we get into Europe, the first thing I want to cover is China. Just this one indicator. Why? Because it's going to give you some information as to what we are seeing right now globally. This is the China credit impulse. Essentially, the China credit impulse is how much money is being lent out into the system. And if you track that back historically, it happens to be a very good indicator of what's to come. Looking at left-hand side, Chinese November credit growth remains lackluster. And this just shows you the credit growth year over year. That is not a good sign because the money needs to keep rolling. But aggressive easing will now turn the credit impulse upwards. So I want to see what happens. All I'm doing here in this case is simply to highlight that when debt is expanding, the economy, not the real economy, but the economy as you see it in the government statistics can get better if you want to look at it in that respect. But that brings me to Europe. Europe car sales plunged 17% to a record low for the month of November. Registrations fell a fifth straight month amid the chip shortage. This is one very, very big thing because all of these cars being pushed out, manufactured, sold, driven. This is the economy. Imagine how many jobs that are built around these car companies. People have well paying jobs. And now, if they don't have the chips, if they, you know, the, they can't get the equipment, whatever the situation is, these companies are not going to do well. And as a result, the shareholders are not going to be too happy. And that means people might be losing their jobs. You need people to buy. You need people to spend. You need people to fill their tanks with gas. You need all of that because it creates jobs, but you can't do so with this ever expanding debt. It needs to actually come from savings once in a while, right? No, no, of course not. Uh, debt, debt is all you need. Sure. Okay. So they give you the, you know, the, the numbers and some people say that I, I have to give every single number on all the charts, talk about the X and the Y axes and everything in between. I like to highlight the trends. If I have to read every number, you know, you're going to be falling asleep. There's no doubt. And a lot of people are actually uh, watching through podcasts. This uh, program is available through every different podcast you could imagine. Coming up short, Europe car sales fell from a year ago for a fifth consecutive month. Now, I am hoping that as we move into 2022, especially if there is a slowdown, if the economy begins to drag downward, that that gives everybody a chance to catch up. But we don't know at this time. Okay, Volkswagen, massive company, um, but, you know, their sales, not the case. How sales tallies how major car makers fared in Europe last month and year to date. Look at this, November, minus 31% for VW. It's not good. You just go down and you look at all that. Now, they are blaming the semiconductors. That's certainly a factor. But there's more going on here. We know that. And I believe that what we are going to face, regardless, is a reckoning. And this comes now because of the financial crisis and the euro sovereign debt crisis that followed it, that we are going to see something major because all of that debt got put on to the governments, which is you, 
the taxpayer, the citizen. You got to pay that. How does that feel? All these big companies, they got their bailouts. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they paid it back, I'm sure. I'm sure they paid it back. That's what we were told. But ultimately, you got to pay for it. Okay, let's just be honest. Total government debt. You can see right here, France, depending how you measure this, France has taken the lead of the title of Europe's biggest debt. You could see it accelerating there beyond Italy. Italy being the white, France being the red. You also have Germany and Spain. Of course, it's important not just to measure the total debt, but as a relation to the economy. And they use the GDP stats. We know about the GDP stats. The point is, as I highlighted in my first and second book, the problem in Europe is excessive debt, terrible demographics for the most part, and the you know they, there's an excessive um, austerity measures to some degree, but no resolution to any of their issues. You know they they point the finger left and right, but nothing is actually being done to resolve it, nor will it ever be resolved. So I don't understand how that is ever going to end up okay. You could tell me, give me your thoughts below what you think will be done to resolve it if there is any resolution at all. Eurozone debt by country, this is a, the second quarter of 2021, this debt, and you can see it broken down as a percentage of the GDP as well. And that just gives you a little bit of some insight you know, because like I said, it's not just the total number. I mean, Greece, just look at that, over 200%. There's, there's no way to fix that. There's, it's just not going to happen. So what do they do? Let's, let's, let's cover that for a moment. What are they going to do? What's Europe going to do? Well, they developed something called the EFSF, okay? That was the first thing. And I talked about that in my first book. Oops. EFSF, I believe it is called, or yeah, EFSF, and then they set up the ESM after that. What is this? Well, nothing really, but essentially they try to package up. Imagine this, you've, you've got Italy's debt and you've got like all this debt. Okay, let's draw this. So a bunch of debt from these different countries. Okay, and this, you know, Let's just give our own rating. The rating agencies like to rate triple A, double A, uh, B, B minus, uh, uh, you know, triple C, all this. Let's just be honest about it, okay? Let's rate it like, like the schools should be rating people, not incomplete. I read that the schools are now going to give incomplete instead of a D or an F. But anyway, different, different story. Well, let me know what you think of that, by the way. Okay. All right, and let, whatever, it doesn't matter. A, I don't know if anybody is an, an A these days, but let's just do this, okay, and a C, okay. So you've got a couple Fs, you got a couple Ds, you got all of these, and what do you do? All right, well, that's, that's a lot of debt. So what you gotta do is you gotta get a big box to put that debt into, and then you, you take it and you simply pile it up right in here, Okay, put it, put it all in quickly, quickly, hurry up. Don't want the video to drag on. I promise, I promise, stick with me, all right? Okay, and you call it an ESM. And I know that you might be thinking, this is silly. What's this guy doing? He's drawing pictures on, on the screen. This is real. Okay, so you look at the ESM. And what they do is then they take this ESM and then they sell it off to an investor, maybe the government, maybe the central banks, and they buy it as a package. Okay, we'll give that a little D for debt. All right, and they give a, you know, some sort of return on it. Let's just say 1%. Oh, okay. and they restructure this debt. That's what restructuring ultimately is. So they basically say some higher authority says, like the IMF or it's the ECB or, or it's going to be the European Commission or, you know, different countries have their own. And they say, we are going to dictate what happens with all of this, this entire process, all of this 
every single step of the way. As a result, you have to do this, this, and this. So they dictate what the rules are. You got to pay the price. Simple explanation. I hope you appreciate that. I mean, I know a lot of people already know what's going on, but that's, I like to just simplify things as, as easy as possible. MSCI Europe index returns. You thought it was crazy in the United States that five or six companies are carrying the entire market. Not the case, because apparently it's the same situation in Europe. MSCI Europe index returns contribution by the 10 largest 10 companies. And you could see a few of them doing exceptionally well over the last little while. All right. One being, I don't know why this mouse is getting all wacky on me. LVMH. LVMH. Okay, one of the biggest companies, the top guy, one of the richest people in the world. Nestle is in here, L'Oreal, and so on. Okay, so it just shows you that what's happening here, it's a phenomenon all around the world. And now we turn the page to the US. Follow the money, they say. Well, Bank of America put this together. It comes from the EPFR, the actual data. Just showing you outflows from bonds continuing. It's been going on actually for a couple months. Peaking out back during this period here, you could see the fallout that happened early in 2020. Trend reverses, but since then, essentially, it's been lower and lower and lower. Okay, investment grade, high yield, emerging market flows. That's been the trend. Largest outflows from the long only flows developed market equities. Showing you a level we haven't seen since that period in 2020. Okay, we're basically at the same level. Money is leaving there. He's leaving. And that's just, of course, over the last week or, or few weeks. But where is the money going? Where's some of that money going anyway? I know you asked that question. Money GPS, this guy never gives me all the answers. No, no, no. It's here. Cash has been moving higher. Cash is trash. Cash is king. You tell me, you decide. Or is it? part of a portfolio. Money market fund assets, they are going higher. Now, it's not as high as we saw back in early 2020, but it is getting much higher. It dipped down what appears to be, you know, towards the end of 2020. And it's been up and down, but, but certainly the trend has been higher. You know, investors are kind of concerned right now how hot can things get. But it remains uh, low as a percentage of the global equity market cap. So, of course, I mean, investors can't keep all of their money in cash. It's just not enough. But what's happening overall? Let's talk about this. Just let me uh, read this. Norway hikes interest rates with more expected. is now at 0.5% in Norway. Still signals three more hikes in 2022, just like the Federal Reserve. What's happening here? Global tightening. Global tightening. Think about that. Who wins in a global tightening? The financial companies tend to do well. I forgot to mention that on, uh, I think that's two videos ago, the, the, the financial companies tend to do well. You see that, uh, you know, defensive stocks tend to do a little bit better than the growth stocks. Tech stocks generally don't do good if you see an increase in interest rates. That's just the way it is historically. We don't know what's going to come up here, but ARC is kind of that symbol of what we could see where things got real crazy on the way up. We'll see potentially on the way down too. I don't know, but things are getting wacky to say the least. All right. If you appreciated the information, hit that thumbs up button. When you do that, you are notifying people out there that this is some good stuff. It helps with the algorithms. And all you got to do is click one button. It's down below. If you haven't seen this video yet, you definitely want to check it out. So just click it and I'll see you there.